Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. And it's Norm from Tested. Norm, tablet season. I've made the joke like 10 times now, if it seems Absolutely. like. Absolutely. This is the last of them. We're at the end. The triumphant Sounds conclusion right. is this guy right here. Uh, this is the mini retina iPad. iPad mini with retina. Retina iPad mini with uh, what? The words go together in some way that makes sense. It's from Apple. It's a seven inch tablet. 7.9 inch tablet. Seven is it going to be a reveal where tablet. that's actually last year's and then the one you have next to it is? I, I was going to test you and have you hold both of them and see which one's which. Well, I can tell I you they're, they're, they're both white. They are both white. They are seemingly identical. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold my hands out. One is imperceptibly thicker than the other. Hold on. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is the new one. I have no idea. I can't tell. That is absolutely the new one. This is the, the new, new one, one. yeah. Yes. Uh, so it's the, heavier. The new one is ever so slightly heavier than the old one. Um, I lost my wiping cloth here, but I, we just put tons of fingerprints here. Uh, the new one is, it's, it's like 30 grams heavier. It okay. is it is perceptibly heavier. Uh, if you put a giant case on your iPad, you won't be able to tell a difference, but that's pretty much the only, that's the only thing. It's a little tiny bit thicker, but you can barely feel it just running your finger across the, the gap between them. I can kind of, oh yeah, that's just, there's an ever so slight increase in thickness. Um, that's to accommodate the bigger battery that's required with the, with both the new screen and the new processor. So that's the, I think people are excited about the screen on the, on the Retina, but I think the big jump is actually the processor because the previous generation was an A5, two generations old, basically the same processor as the iPhone 4 or the iPad 2. Very slow with um, iOS 7. Very slow with iOS 7. Like if you came from an iPad 4 or even like an iPhone 5 to this, you're probably not going to notice much of a performance difference. Going from an iPad mini to uh, the, the mini with Retina, you will notice a massive performance increase, and I will show you right now, um, just in game launch times. So this is XCOM. This is pretty much the longest uh, launch time I've seen in a game. I'm tapping them both at the same time. Now, the thing about this game is it hides a lot of the loading behind this, this intro video that plays. So I'm going to start tapping. And that'll let, you, let me skip once I get to the point. Already you can see... And the one on the left there is the new one. Yeah, the one that's further away. I'll switch that in a minute. Um, Less tapping, tapping, one. tapping, 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 it's tapping, tapping, already, tapping, you're already tapping, in tapping. this menu screen. It's a video, and I'm in. So that's the menu. Bam. The right one I can keep tapping. Keep tapping. So this is the most traumatic tapping. loading difference between the old... Uh, in terms of app loading, from um, f not from cache, yes, uh, with a, a game, uh, a pretty S still going over here asset heavy game. This is just to load the menu, though. This isn't to load any assets. The, you see a comparable uh, load time in the Difference. like loading the menu, lo loading the actual maps. Um, you notice it in web browsing as well. So the difference between this and the and the original mini is that basically you can use third-party browsers that don't have the benefit of Apple's JavaScript rendering engine, which they lock out because of security reasons, apparently. Um, I think Still it might have crashed. I'm not even sure what's happening. Oh, here. oh there finally you there. So it's like a minute, probably. I mean, that was a long time. Um, Those minutes add up. It, it takes it takes a long time, uh, and even like tapping the I tap the buttons at the same time, yep. it exited back to the home screen, and it took longer. Uh, unfortunately, we're having some Wi-Fi problems today, so I can't show the web browsing performance. But it is um, it's not as dramatic, but it is noticeable the difference between Safari on the new tablet, Safari on the old tablet. Uh, things that you would that I previously would have maybe grabbed a laptop to do, I find myself doing on the mini, like configuring router controls and stuff like that. And also, just like with the comparison between the iPad. Air and previous generation mm -hmm. iPads, even the iPad 3 or iPad 4, uh, a lot of the speed increases in day-to-day -day use comes with the delay that happens when you press a button or launch an app. The animation speeds are exactly the same, but how long it takes before the animation is enacted is decreased. You can even see like opening up the keyboard is a little bit slightly slower on the on the old one. It's like I said, it's nothing major, it's not a huge deal. Um, if you're just web browsing and checking email, you might not even notice a difference going from the mini to the mini with the retina. Um, but if you do anything beyond that, whether it's light photo editing, uh, even even things like viewing video and stuff like that, the video downloads start faster. So that's um, and even mobile like mobile video sites 
tend to perform better on the mini and there's less crashing and stuff like that. Part of that's due to the faster SOC, part of it's due to the, the double RAM. So the new mini with Retina has a gig of RAM, the old one had 512 megs of RAM. So that's Apple's A7. That's yeah. We've talked about it a ton. Uh, how is the mini with Retina A7 compare with what's in the iPhone 5S and the iPad Air? So it's the same. Uh, unlike previous generations, we've talked about this a lot in both the 5S video and the iPad Air video, so I'm not going to get into the specifics. But uh, unlike previous generations where the tablet processor had a more capable GPU and maybe a wider memory path or something like that, in this, uh, this one, the only difference is clock speed. So the Air GP, uh, CPU is 100 megahertz faster than the Mini with Retina, and the 5S is the same. Same clock speed, uh, 1.3 gigahertz versus 1.4 gigahertz in the air. So essentially, the iPad Mini is the same processor, same same CPU, same motion pro coprocessor as in the iPhone 5S. But it's pushing more pixels. Than Slightly more pixels, yeah. Um, so that's the that's the other thing that's changed. Obviously, is that this is a Retina resolution display. What does that mean? It uh, means it's quad four times the number of pixels in the previous generation. The iPad on my right, the original Mini is 1024 by 768, the new one is 20, uh, 2048 by 1536, or right. something like that. From this distance, I'm at a, about a four foot, uh, three and a half three and foot and a half distance. Feet, yeah. I cannot tell, it's imperceptible. Difference. So they look about the same. The places where you notice the differences are when you're reading books. So look, and you see the load time differences again here. Uh, I'm gonna That's wipe this unbearable. clean. It's, it's pretty slow. Um, this is the same size font. You can, you're not going to see it on the on the tiny pixels of the 720p video stream. However, you can the, the text looks more like paper. Um, that's the big difference. Uh, when you're looking at things like comics, the comics are much more readable on the new mini than the old mini. And then the one I like to use to really highlight the difference in a real world thing that you'll never notice is that when I'm doing my crosswords on the Mini with Retina, I can actually see the numbers. Um, let me load up the puzzle here. This was loaded a minute ago, but. It's out of memory now. I probably had to switch out, yeah. Um, so you can actually read the, the clue numbers here, and they're, they're, you kind of have to squint. 26 and 29 look more or less the same. So again, it's stuff that you're not going to see rendered down to 720p. When you're holding it in your hand, it does make a difference. Um, and, and photos are the other obvious choice. Photos look much, much better on the Mini with Retina um, than they do on the OG Mini. So For all intents and purposes, it's the same um, as the iPad Air, slightly slower uh, processor, but we're talking about the, the same screen, uh, same resolution, and text looks uh, even better because it's higher pixel density. Uh, so what, I, what Apple did actually with uh, the iPad mini with Retina is at, it used basically the same panel as the iPhone 5S, mm -hmm. it's the same pixel density. So yeah. uh, the menu, when you're looking at 100% you know, web pages on, a, on an iPhone 5S, you know, text, as good as text looks on the iPhone 5S, and iPhone 5, and I guess the 4 and 4S and mm -hmm. the 4, is how good it will look on the iPad mini. Yeah, it's, it is. It is very comparable. Now, there has been some screen controversies with the new device. Um, the first thing that people reported is that there was some ghosting with the LCD display on the Mini with Retina. So that's with motion? Um, the, uh, no, not with motion, uh, sorry, with uh, um, uh, uh, burn-in, rather, not okay. ghosting. So you'd, you'd leave it on the same screen for a while, you'd go to another screen, and you'd see the remnants of the previous screen on the display. And there's a test that you can find online. There are multiple test tests. Uh, uh, if you really want to check, I mean, even if you void your warranty, mm -hmm. That that will let you. It won't warranty. It won't void your warranty. It will let you. If it burns in, you can actually replace it. That's well yeah. within warranty. Um, but that's because uh, Apple is sourcing the screens from two different manufacturers. Yeah. So there are two different manufacturers of the screen. I think it's Sharp and LG, mm -hmm. and there are probably some Samsung units coming on by now because I know that they were talking about that. Um, the test, if you want to find it, just search for Marco Arment screen burn-in test. It's actually I think a MacBook test originally, but it's basically a web page that loads a bunch of flashing screens, and you leave it on the one screen for five minutes, come back, and you'll see the pattern, or you won't. Um, I, so I tested my unit, I know you tested your unit, neither of ours, which we both went to the Apple yep. store and bought, uh, no, had any burn-in whatsoever. No um, so that was good. Uh, there were also some concerns about yellow discoloration along the bottom of the screen. That seemed to be a very limited manufacturing issue because I haven't seen anything about that. And Apple was really good about replacing that stuff. Now, the larger issue is this gamut, uh, the gamut concern. Okay. 
So what does that mean? Uh, what that means? So what the gamut is is the range of colors that a display can show. Uh, typically, in the old days, that would be 16.7 million, you know, 16-bit color. Uh, as we've gotten more advanced and the LCD panels have gotten better, that range has expanded into and beyond the full NTSC gamut. And all the NTSC all the gamut, yeah, is is all the colors that your monitor is. It's it's a it's like an ANSI spec. It's not. It is not an ANSI spec. You want it, all the colors of the wind. It is a spec that says. Here are colors that you should be able to display. Okay. Um, typically, LCDs haven't displayed those. In recent years, they have. The Nexus 7 2013 edition does. I think the Kindle Fire HDX even does. Um, the iPad Air goes a little bit beyond that. Mm -hmm. um, this Retina Mini is the same as the iPhone 5S, so it does not go beyond that. Um, in practice, it doesn't mean a whole lot means almost nothing. Um, the only place that I would say that you'll see, encounter that in day-to-day -day use uh, and want that gamut, the wider gamut, is if you're doing photography and you're looking at really high quality photos with a large high-end DSLR, maybe even a mirrorless camera on your tablet regularly. But I, I mean, you can, you're more of a photographer than I am. I find that the small screen is not ideal for photo viewing. I, like, uh, I, I would not recommend this tablet for photographers. I think photos are great on the small screen. I would rec not recommend either the iPad Air or the iPad Mini or tablet in general for photo viewing because you're mostly importing your JPEGs. You're talking and about for like workflow and, and it, editing and it, stuff it, like that. Yes, and yeah. you can't you can't do that on tablet anyway. And if you're importing JPEGs just to review them, they're fine. You know, even even last you know last doesn't make a difference. It does. It makes no difference. Okay. Um, the so only the time you should care about the gamut is if you're ed actually doing real editing on on that monitor, which means when you're buying like a desktop monitor. Okay, so so if you're in Photoshop, you're looking at like mm -hmm. large deep bit rate, dip, bit depth, mm -hmm. I guess photos. High bit depth. That's where it matters. Okay. Yeah. Um, there is also if you if you want to do a quick comparison, you have like for example an iPad Air or even a last gen iPad and the new iPad Mini. Mm -hmm. You can go in Apple's default wallpapers, and Ooh. this is something Anand showed. If you go into the default wallpapers and go to uh, the stills, the very bottom one with the triangles. Okay. Um, which I think you're trying to pull up right I'm now. I'm doing it's, it right it's now. On the stills yeah. on the right side. It's going to be in the bottom, all the way in the middle. The and the the multicolor one, right? Yeah. Uh, what you'll notice is that on the bottom left-hand corner, that red triangle is less red. It's more orangey on the iPad Air. Mini with Retina than with the on the iPad Air. So this is. Oh. Go all the way down. There you go. So this is at. It's ever so slightly less ever, red. Ever ever so slightly um, less red on the iPad Mini with it's Retina. It's the kind of thing that you probably aren't going to see on the screen. Oh damn. Um, just because the the, our cameras the video capture. isn't going to capture the difference. Uh, yeah. The other thing that you can also scrutinize on the new uh, iPad Mini with Retina in terms of the, the screen quality, because DisplayMate has done a bunch of tests mm -hmm. and has uh, concluded concluded that the iPad Mini with Retina screen is not as good as, for example, uh, the Kindle Fire HDX mm -hmm. screen, uh, is that there is some color banding a little bit in gradients. So again, if you go to the default wallpapers and you go to something like uh, the, uh, the third from the bottom, the, 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 the sunset, middle, or yeah, the, the left. left, the left one, and you look at where the orange on the bottom transfers to the blue, if you look really, really closely, you'll see a little bit of color banding. What color banding is, is lines that, um, that kind of show where the gradient is, color gradients are changing. Again, you're not going to be able to see this on, on our video. camera, yeah. but if this is something that you really, really want to scrutinize and that you, you care about, it's something to know, but it's Again, not going to affect any of your day-to-day -day use. In the real world, this. yeah. It's stuff that doesn't matter outside of pretty limited use cases. Um, the the uh, let's see. I think that's it for display, right? Yeah, it's 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 otherwise a great display. It's the what matters l more than the technical aspects of the display is the size of the display and what the iPad Mini is good for. The, the, what the seven point nine inch screen is good for versus a nine point seven inch versus a straight up seven inch different aspect ratio screen. So the big difference with the with the seven point nine inch screen and the device in general is that it's very palmable. You can hold it in one hand very comfortably. Whether you do kind of this grip where you grip it across the back, if you have big hands, or even if you just kind of hold it like this. Even I can do that. Norm can hold it. He has, he has smaller hands than me. Um, it is very comfortable to hold one hand, and part of that is because of the weight, uh, which we can get into. The, we have weights for a ton of different devices we can run down here in a sec. Uh, the, other, the main thing, though, is the center of gravity for this versus the larger tablets, whether it's the iPad Air, the Surface, whatever. Um, because the center of gravity is behind your palm, the palm of your hand, you don't notice holding the weight as much. It's not, you know, it's obviously heavier than something like a Kindle Paperwhite, right? Mm -hmm. This is a very light device. It's 200 grams. Yes. Um, 
but you don't, you, there's no stress on your fingers for holding it, even for long periods of time. And, and holding the tablet one-handed for a long period of time doesn't matter if you primarily are sitting up, your tablet's on your desk or in your lap or something like that. In fact, actually, if you're primarily using this in your lap, probably the larger device is gonna be better for you because you'll be able to see it better. It's the same resolution. If it's further away, you're gonna want the larger screen. Um, but if you're laying in bed and you're holding the book up for a long time, you spend a lot of time laying in bed reading books or, or working, re answering email, whatever it is you do, like being able to hold it one-handed makes a big difference. And when you say laying in bed, you mean? I mean recline, recline with your head flat. Propped on your bed. Yeah, not like this. Because that's not doing still one of those numbers. It's not recommended to lay flat in bed and hold any tablet above your head. You're gonna whack yourself in the face. Even if it's as yeah. you know as heavy as the iPad mini with retina. Um, so when the thing when you're holding a larger tablet, whether it's the, the nine inch tablets uh, like the Air or the last generation iPad, if you hold it one handed like this, let me see the gray air for a second I'll just demonstrate. So holding it one-handed like this puts a ton of, requires a lot of pressure on your fingers. And what that does is cause uh, tendon damage over long periods of time uh, and can cause RSI problems or even like tennis elbow, stuff like that. So you, you want to avoid holding something that weighs, uh, that requires you to put pressure on your fingers over a long period of time. That's, sure. that's the takeaway. Um, so um, that's the ergonomics of the size and weight. What about the usability of the aspect ratio of the screen compared to something like your Kindle? Your Nexus 7 or, Nexus or your 7. Kindle Fire? Mm -hmm. um, I actually like the thinner, skinnier screen for reading. I think that the, the skinnier screen of the Nexus 7 or the Kindle Fire, they're, they're same resolution, a little bit different aspect ratio, is actually, oops, is actually quite good. Um, the, the, good grief, our, internet, our internet's janky today. Um, the larger issue, I mean, this is a more palmable device. It's a little bit lighter. It's really easy to grip one-handed. You know, there's, there's plenty of overlap with my fingers. It's closer to the original Kindle. Um, and, and I quite like it. I think it's really good. Um, it's also beveled differently in the bottom. Yeah, the, I don't find that that's as much of a thing you notice. I mean, you're gripping it mostly by the edges, regardless of how, I mean, how you hold it. iPad mini is wider, so... It's a little tougher to do a, a full width grip. Yeah, but it's you'll see it's it's like you're holding on your fingertips or on the knuckles rather than I I, I mean everybody's going to hold these differently, so that's okay. all, that's all going to. But a taller change screen and a narrower screen, basis. Uh, you prefer it more for reading. I do prefer the taller, narrower screen for reading. Now for web browsing and stuff like that, the wider screen's actually quite good. I, I again I can't demo it because our internet's bad today, um, but you see. Like you get more of the real page. It's closer to a traditional desktop window, even in portrait orientation. So you can, uh, where, where am I? There I am. Um, so you can scroll up and down. You don't necessarily, you can tap in if you want, but you don't necessarily have to. Uh, this just happens to be the page that I had open <laughs> last week, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's that's the the usability stuff. Uh, reading is great. One-handed reading is is really good. Uh, I love doing short typing sessions because you can do things like type uh, with your thumbs, like you would on a phone. Uh, I actually find myself responding to emails. It's much more convenient for cording than doing a cord where you use one hand and your your palm like you would on a larger tablet. Uh, it is less good when you're using an actual keyboard with this. So, so it's a little bit small screen to have far enough away to have a keyboard set up and actually use. So uh, the way Apple has designed iOS for uh, tablets for their iPads is that everything in the UI is just scaled down. Yes. If you look at the uh, the notification bar on top where the time and the battery indicators are, for example, mm -hmm. uh, it's just smaller text uh, on the iPad mini, including all your icons and everything. And does iOS 7 know whether it's on it's running on a mini version? Versus a full-size iPad. That, that's an interesting question. I have no idea. Do you have any? Do you have any idea? I, it does not. I, I can't websites imagine. And websites, there's no marker that will let it render differently. Right. And I, I assume apps have the same lack of knowledge because mm -hmm. it seems like apps render identically, just slightly smaller or larger. So, and it's because of the different pixel density that they that they're going to. And so you have to get used to the actual physical smaller keyboard, whether you like it or not. It's not like yeah. If if you are used to typing on a full-size iPad and and not just the spaces between your thumbs, but actually the spaces between the keys, that is reduced, compressed by you know your 30% on yeah. the iPad mini, and there's nothing that will let you change that. For what it's worth, I found that the, the adjustment period was more than offset by the ability to hold and, and do thumb cording. Um, 
it just this is a much more effective way to type on a touch screen, I think, than trying to do one hand and, and skate across the whole thing. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I find myself doing a lot of my normal morning email, web browsing, uh, stuff that actually requires a fair amount of typing, even on the screen, it's no problem. Um, watching videos, good. Obviously, the bigger screen is going to be better for, for videos, but you're looking at 720p video on this crazy high resolution screen most of the time. and. You know your experience is not not ideal. Uh, the lack of a stand is, uh, and the lack of a good case with a stand, kind of makes video watching difficult in in many circumstances. You, know, you find yourself holding it or you know doing one of these numbers where you're sitting with your elbows propped up on a table, or your knees or something. There might be a good third party one that I just haven't seen yet. I'm sure that there's plenty of good third party uh, stands, uh, stands. and there's even stuff that you can laser cut or print, mm -hmm. 3D print, or just make out of cardboard. You know, there's plenty of uh, instructables for that kind of stuff. Now, what about uh, the battery? Uh, Hold on, games. Okay. Games are good. Uh, unlike the previous generation iPad, which stunk uh, with games because of the two generations old CPU, mm -hmm. uh, this is fantastic. Uh, we showed the game performance with uh, XCOM load times and stuff like that. It's it's really nice. It works very well. Um, and then, uh, like we said, photos. The screen's more than adequate. Um, but I don't find myself, I, I find myself not doing any kind of photo stuff that requires any real workflow just because the apps that I use for photo management like Aperture and Lightroom don't have iOS analogs at this point. No, they do not. Um, one thing that is also interesting is that when, if you run something like an iPhone app mm -hmm. on the iPad mini it, and you run it the full double size, mm -hmm. uh, it's more usable because uh, it's, it's more closer to the design of the, the iPhone. Well, and this is an iOS 7 change as well. So, um, we're once again offline, but you can see, you may not be able to see this in the video, but with iOS 7, they're actually using the Retina assets for iPhone apps on iPads, so you actually don't have the low-res pixelated looking apps that you had before. Previously, when it was emulating an iPhone app on an iPad, it was using the non-retina assets and now it's using the retina assets so it looks a lot as, better as much as those assets are available exactly yeah, assuming that it's a retina compatible app um, so that's actually much better uh, battery life is virtually identical to the ipad the last generation ipad which is pretty impressive Full given size or the the, the ipad mini okay um, so you're looking at eight to ten hours plus of web browsing depending on how much video you're watching and stuff like that um, you know, Twitter, Facebook, all that kind of stuff, email. Uh, video viewing, I didn't actually test this. I tested it out to about 10 hours, but in Antex that he got 13 hours. Um, you know, it just, it's more than you're ever going to use. If you're on a flight to Australia, you should be able to watch plenty of movies. Okay. Um, uh, games are anywhere from four to eight hours, depending on what you're playing, and can go up more if you're playing really simple web games, stuff like that. But like your XCOM is will will destroy battery, both because your CPU is running full speed and you're using you know the display. It so it is a device that if you use heavily, you will get a full day's use out of it. But if you're using it lightly, uh, it, then you will get multiple days. Yeah, use out the of it. the thing you said about the air, like if I forget to charge this and it's a normal weekday where I'm just using it a, an hour or two at night and an mm -hmm. hour or two in the morning, then I can go two or three days no problem without recharging. That's fine. Um, and standby time, it dra draws practically no energy in standby, which is which is uh, a very different from the Nexus Seven, for example. The Kindle Fire HDX is actually quite good in standby. The Nexus Seven is a little gnarly in standby. It tends to eat really eat. Battery. Okay. Um, so uh, let's see. Camera. It's the same exact cameras as the iPad Air. We don't need mm -hmm. to really get into that. It's a five megapixel, I think, f stop 2.4 uh, rear facing really camera matter. and a 1.2 megapixel front facing camera. Mm -hmm. uh, I find that this is my preferred device for FaceTime, which we do uh, like every weekend since I have a kid now. So um, it's how the grandparents know the, know the grandchild. Yep. Um, the pictures are analogous to like a iPhone 4S would be my guess if I had to say which exactly the same is. as the iPad Air. Yeah. Um, okay, so cases, cases are tough on this. There aren't. Uh, I, I haven't tested a ton of third-party cases at this point, but I did use a smart cover for the last year with my iPad Mini. This is the smart cover. It's polyurethane only. Uh, it's forty bucks. Uh, it has a little magnet. It's just the same as the big one, but the smaller version. Three folds, so you put it on the iPad, like so. It, mag it magnets on over here on the side, and then you fold it up three times, and it makes a stand. It's it's okay. I don't know that it's worth 40 bucks. Um, the stand kind of flops around. It doesn't hold on the back very well. It kind of does At a little all. bit. And it does for just long enough for you to think it's going to hold, and then nope. it flaps. Um, 
And the worst part about it is it gets really gross and dirty because of where you have to hold it. So even, like I have relatively clean hands most of the time. You can see where I hold this thing over the last year. That is super gross. You can't fold it, uh, fold it in? You could, but you know, it's not, it's not right. I mean, the thing to do is to take it off and just hold it like this. But if you're going to do that, why bother with a case in what the first place? What an inconvenience. It is, it is not a convenient cover. Um, you can do the trifold, which I do sometimes, but that still doesn't solve your, hey, the case is not is going to get dirty problem. Yeah. Um, and the outside doesn't look great either. So the polyurethane covers don't age particularly well. I probably wouldn't use this for more than a year, and it's been impossible to clean so far. The new alternative mm -hmm. is the smart cover. So that's this guy right here. This actually does come in leather. And, uh, and you know, if you recall, we really liked the original smart cover, uh, the leather versions. Yes. They were great, they aged well, they looked really nice, they were sturdy, and they had the nice metal clamp that holds onto the side. I think I was probably the only person in the world that liked the metal clamp. Um, this works with both the original mini and the new one. The only difference is the thickness. It just kind of snaps in here. It adds a ton of weight is the main complaint against Relative it. Relative to the weight of the Mini. Yeah, so it adds 100 grams, I think. 110 grams, uh, which is a third of the weight of the Mini. I find that that's more than I want to have added to the tablet. Um, so what I've been doing, I actually just ordered a sleeve for it. Uh, I'm just gonna put it in a sleeve when I put it in my bag and carry it naked the rest of the time. Because there's, you don't you don't really need anything. The no. glass on the iPad's plenty thick. And the sleeve is really um, just to protect it from the other contents of your bag. Exactly. So the sleeve can live in the bag. Exactly. Um, and and also, I mean, this thing's seventy dollars, which is insane Ugh. for a case. You should don't pay seventy dollars for a case. Um, if you really want the smart cover, I think it's a fine. I think it's fine. I wish that they made the smart covers in leather. I would happily pay another ten or twenty dollars for a leather version of this that would age better. But they don't sell those anymore. So there you go. Uh, that's the Apple case front. I, I had a hard time finding good case reviews for the mini. People did a lot of them when it first came out and haven't updated them since last year. So. Um, and then the last thing is price. Okay. So the original mini debuted at three hundred twenty nine dollars for sixteen bucks. gigs. Yep. Yeah, uh, two hundred thirty bucks. Uh, pretty good price. Three thirty. Oh, three thirty. Not two thirty. Oh right, three thirty. Yeah. Three thirty. Okay. Three hundred thirty dollars. So it was basically a hundred bucks more than the Nexus Seven or the the then current Kindle Fire Seven Inch. Last Nexus Seven was also two hundred. Two hundred bucks. Yes. One hundred bucks. One hundred bucks difference. Um, I'm fine with a bit of a price difference for the access to the Apple ecosystem. I find that the app situation there is better um, for the most part. There are some quirks and there's some weird stuff that Apple locks out like fast web rendering and third party apps. But for the most part, it's pretty good. Um, the current Nexus 7 and current Kindle Fire HDX put you in a kind of an interesting spot. So uh, this is the Nexus 7, this is the Kindle Fire HDX. Both are really good, very fast tablets. They're both significantly cheaper. They're $230 uh, for, for the Nexus 7 and the Kindle Fire HDX. Uh, they're 19 by 20 by 1200 uh, resolution tablets. So comparable screens, mm -hmm. uh, better gamut on both of them. Not that we really think that matters for most people in the real world. Um, the difference is that the ecosystem on the Kindle Fire HDX is pretty grim. It's just stuff that's in the Apple Store and in, in their App Store, uh, which is like PopCap Games, and I mean a large, large subset of the available Android apps are there. But you get Amy. You do. You do get to call the girl and have the uncomfortable conversation. Amy, I like you. I I need I need to know how I can make this work on my TV. Yeah, oh, we don't know how to do that. No. Um, the Nexus 7 is really, really good. Like, it is a very capable tablet for $230 at 16 gig model. I mean, realistically, you're going to buy the 32 gig model. The 16 gig model probably isn't large enough. Um, I, it's, I think it's fine. 16 gigs. You is think fine. it's okay? Um, the apps don't seem to be as large on the Android side as they are on the on the iOS side. Uh, the I, I think the minimum, if you're going to play games at all, you're going to want with a mini is 32 gigs. Yes. Um, that's going to add another $100 to the cost. It goes from $400 to $500. If you want to add uh, a cellular networking LTE, that's another $130 on top of that. So you're looking at, you know, don't get the LTE option. It's not necessary. No. I'd say no, don't get the LTE option on the mini uh, because if you were to get the LTE option, you, you'd want that full iPad Air, which has a bigger capacity battery, so you can actually use your hotspot and use it as an actual tethering device. And I, I think unless you're on a on a legacy data plan where you don't have access to tethering for no cost, mm -hmm. just just you know that the only reason you would buy the the LTE version of this is if it's your primary computer. You spend a lot of time away from home. 
Um, same goes for the Air. If, if you can tether with your phone, buy a $50 battery that you can plug your phone into and you just use your phone as the hotspot, that's fine. Pricing is interesting because the difference between last year's iPad mini and this year's iPad mini is uh, a price increase of $70, although yeah. it's an actual price difference of $100 now because the old mini is still in stores for right. $300. Uh, and what Google did with the Nexus 7, last year it was 200 this year it was 230 a mm -hmm. price increase of 30 bucks, reasonable, very reasonable, uh, is just, they just changed the market for what people can ex should are expecting to pay for a smaller tablet. And they took away Apple's ability to uh, reduce Apple's ability to charge, uh, to, to sell small as a premium, which I think from our use, uh, it totally is a premium. When you're talking about phones, yeah, maybe uh, the bigger phone is more valuable to some people because a small phone, uh, they can't read as much. The full calendar. The full calendar the full experience calendar. on a big phone makes a ton of sense. And when we say big, we mean anything from a 4.5 to a 5 yeah. inch phone as opposed to a straight 3.5 or 4 middle. inch yeah. uh, of, of, the, uh, of the iPhone. But on the tablet side, uh, the reduce, reduction in weight to a certain point reduction in screen is what we feel is a premium. But what Google and what Kim, and Apple, Amazon has done is taken that advantage away. Well, so the Amazon situation is a little bit weird. I think I think we have to kind of take Amazon out of that equation because where the knock against tablets has always been their content consumption devices. This that's literally what this is. This is a device that you use to buy stuff from Amazon. If you're already buying video, if you're an Amazon Instant Video subscriber, if you subscribe to their free play kid friendly uh, store thing, like that makes a lot of sense. But if you want a general purpose computing device that is a tablet form, probably would skip the, the Kindle Fire. Get the Nexus 7. I would get the Nexus 7 over the, if you're looking at the low end of the of the budget. And a $170 price difference between the Nexus 7 it's tough. and the iPad mini. It makes more sense to get a Nexus 7, and then you know if you need to be on iOS, then full-size iPad or, I, or an iPhone. I, I mean, I think that the size thing, I, I know you have a different feeling than I do about the size. Um, I'm happy paying the price premium for the one-handed iPad. Like I think that 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 to me is worth 170 bucks more uh, because I am really invested in the iOS ecosystem. Because I, you are. I've bought a bunch of games. I've yeah. used you know I use Tweetbot as my primary social media stuff, which is an important part of of our existence. Um, and the fact that I've now got my parents doing photo sharing and stuff like that has me pretty locked in. If I was starting from scratch, scratch, I would definitely buy a Nexus. It's a much better value, um, and it's just as capable. The implementation of Chrome on the Nexus is much, much better than the implementation of Chrome on the iPad, just because of the of the um, the, the the performance difference on third party apps versus Safari on iOS. The bigger diff the bigger question for people, and I think most people go into the tablet marketplace knowing exactly what ecosystem they want to be in mm -hmm. and you know they're not really deciding between Nexus 7 and iPad mini because yeah. it's either a price thing or an ecosystem thing and I think I would lean toward Nexus 7 for just for the sheer 170 bucks. The bigger question if you're an iOS user is whether you're going to get the iPad Air yeah. or the iPad mini and it is I think way too compelling to save the hundred dollars and buy the iPad mini than it is to get the iPad it, Air. Unless you really, really, really think you need the bigger screen, I think the mini makes a lot more sense. Yes, and I, I put this in front of my parents, yeah. and they have like an iPad 3, and I said, would you want an iPad mini, which is $100 cheaper? Yeah. They said, that's too small. Oh, really? Text is too small on this. So it's an old eyes issue. It is. They want big pictures. They, they want big text. So see, I like the ability to hold. For me, it's one-handed convenience and the fact that I can chuck it in my bag and I don't notice it's there, even though it's only a third of a pound less than the than the iPad Air. So check back in 30 years when our eyes are terrible, and then we'll see. Uh, we have to yeah, we'll, be, we'll want the 14-inch tablet, I guess, right. by then. So um, that's it. I mean, it's a personal, like all of this stuff, so personal preference, whether you want to buy the Android tablet or the iOS tablet, get the one that has the apps and stuff you want or that you're already invested in. When it comes to size, you know, go to the store, try them both out and pick the one that you think is best. Uh, so that'll do it for us today. Uh, this has been the tablet year. We did like seven of these videos this year, it seems like. Uh, are you going to keep yours? I know you bought one. Absolutely, we can keep mine. You're, that's the, that's yeah. your new tablet of choice? Yeah. This is a travel tablet. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a home tablet and this is a travel tablet. So, so. But if you were in the luxury of if you weren't in the luxury of having two tablets, it would be I think the iPad Mini. You think you'd buy the Mini? Yeah, that's what that's where I am. Uh, so that's it, the iPad Mini. It's the one I like. Uh, we'll see you guys next time, and probably not until next year with more tablet stuff uh, for test time. Well, I'm Norm. See you guys later. Bye.